Well, it's that time again, guys. It's food short time with Johnny Orr. Tonight, we are doing some delicious grilled tuna. This is gonna be amazing. It's just been pre-marinated by myself, frozen, and uh, so it's been kind of marinating that for a while. And uh, so I just, it, seasonings on, a, on tuna is, is you don't go overboard, you don't go crazy. But it's always good with a little soy sauce, a little garlic, maybe even some spicy mayo when it's all said and done. I also got some, uh, just a little pound of shrimp that looks pretty good and uh, over in the meat section, the, the seafood section of Harris Teeter. And also some beautiful looking asparagus. It's nice, big, fat stalks of it. We're gonna roast that in the oven. It's gonna be amazing. Stick around, don't go away. You don't wanna miss it. So to start with, I'm gonna take the asparagus. I'm gonna prep that, because that's gonna bake for a little bit. It'll probably take the longest. Uh, because our tuna, when we grill it, we, um, we like it pretty raw. We like it rare inside, so uh, it doesn't take long on the grill once the grill gets nice and hot. I've already pre-washed these, and uh, if you see any dirt, you know, you're gonna wanna redo that. And all we're gonna do is kind of get rid of part of the end on your stalk here, and uh, just to keep it fresh from here on up. And uh, so we'll use all of this and we'll put it on a pan. We're gonna do some olive oil, some garlic, and some other seasonings there. So I'm just gonna take my good chef knife, basically, and take a, just take a few pieces at once, like this. And then I'm just gonna cut the ends off, you know, about an inch, inch and a half at the most, maybe two inches at the most, I should say. So about an inch or an inch and a half, though, is about normal. So you'll get a nice, pretty stalk like that. You're gonna wanna pat these dry, so I've got a towel over here and I'm patting these dry on. Take your pieces and you can throw those away or you can use them otherwise somewhere else. All right, once my ends are off, I'm just taking them, they have like a little glaze on them from the water from washing them. And so I'm just gonna kind of lay out just a, a little section of them, almost as if when I'm getting ready to cut them, and just kind of take a paper towel and you just wanna pat them dry. It's pretty simple, pull that out, roll them over. A little bit better than what I'm doing, but roll them over. And you'll see the new wet side on there and you just kind of pat them dry on the other side. Okay, so when you put them on your pans, I had to wind up using two pans for this because you don't want them crowding each other. You want them to be spaced out. They don't have to be spaced out quite as much as this one. This one was my overflow pan. But this was the, my larger pan and I kind of just put them all together. But you can see there's, there's a little bit of a finger-sized gap, maybe even smaller than that. To these pieces even if they're touching it's not a big deal you just don't want them on top of each other you want one small level uh, flat level and then if you have to use overflow you get yourself another pan and do the same thing you can cook them both at the same time so tonight's beer selection is uh, Appalachian Mountain Brewing Company I discovered this at a taste testing that I did inside the Harris Teeter these are the cans uh, they come in a four pack. This is an IPA, of course. This one is called their, uh, it's just, uh, it's from Boone, North Carolina, and it's Appalachian Mountain Brewing Company is, is the name of them. Uh, this is the Long Leaf India Pale Ale, which of course we know I love IPAs. So we're gonna, I've had this one before at the taste test and I did buy a four pack back then and I haven't had any since. So I thought it was time tonight to share something new with you. And Bella, of course, is discovering something outside. Divine, great bitter taste. Um, oh wow, that's just that's just amazing. I do love IPA. All right, let's get back to work. We got stuff to do. For the shrimp, I'm doing something pretty simple. Uh, what I bought, they just happen to have it on special. It's already uh, dressed and deveined, basically raw shrimp. The tails are still on. All I gotta do is pinch those off. You just give it a little pinch in the bottom and they'll pop right off. You can wait until you boil them. If you're gonna do like a shrimp cocktail, then you can wait until you boil them and then when you get ready to do it, all you literally have to do is pinch that tail. The shell starts right here on this, on this shrimp and goes back that way. The rest of this is already the shell has been taken off. So you can just pinch this and you see that whole shell just popped right off. Now this is ready. So you can cook this. I'm just gonna put this in my strainer type. So you just take it. You can see where the shell starts. It's a little bit darker, different color. You just pinch it at the back. Pull that sucker right off. This one's ready to cook now too. All right. Now, real quick, a little tip uh, for disposing of any carcass of whether I'm talking chicken, beef, 
or fish especially, but like shrimp too, because of the, the tails themselves can cause a really bad odor in your garbage. I always take a Ziploc bag, if I can spare one, of course, you know, because it's gonna get thrown away, and just put all the parts that you wanna put in there in that bag, all these tails, and zip them up. That way, you just kinda get all the air out, zip them up, throw that in the garbage, and that way the odor stays kind of, you know, not as bad as it could be. One of the other things you can do is actually throw the pieces in the microwave. Like if I open chicken up and I have that little mat that's on the bottom of the chicken container and the styrofoam thing and the bag and all that stuff, I'll put that in the microwave for about two minutes. It cooks whatever's in there and so that when you throw it away, it's not raw anymore. It's been cooked. Uh, so the smell will not generate as much as it will if it's raw. These are raw. This could also be just cooked in the microwave, but I don't want the microwave to smell like fish, so I'm not bothering with that. I'm just gonna do it in the Ziploc bag and seal it off. But you can throw it in the microwave and it'll, it'll cook it and it'll eliminate the, uh, the rawness up there so that the odor is not gonna be quite as bad. Hang tight. When dealing with garlic, remember what we told you. Garlic has, let me just show you. Garlic has kind of a, a paper outside of it. And in order to get that paper off, a lot of people sit there and they'll take it and they'll just start trying to peel and peel and peel and they just can't figure it out. But if you watch Food Network for any lengthy period of time, someone is going to show you the trick of grabbing this, taking your knife, flat edge, pressing down, and bam, the paper just falls right off and now you have a perfectly clean piece of garlic. All right, so for our asparagus real quick, I'm gonna address these. We're gonna use what we have talked about, the olive wagon flavored olive oil that you can get at Lafayette Village in Raleigh, North Carolina. You can probably get this in so many different stores too, but this particular brand is one that I get uh, at the actual, the olive wagon store in Lafayette Village off of uh, Falls of the Noose Road. This is the Greek seasoning version. And I'm just gonna lightly drizzle. I'm gonna put my finger over the tip here and just kind of drizzle it onto the asparagus like so. And I might even get a brush out because I want to I want to hit them all. I want to make sure they all get some olive oil on them. And since this is flavored olive oil, you don't want to go crazy with it because it's expensive. But oh my gosh, it tastes, it's the best olive oil in the world. Take a little brush and just make sure I kind of make, check them all, see if they all got hit with the olive oil. I just wanna make sure they're all covered. Cause first of all, I do the olive oil first because when and then when I put the seasoning on there, it'll stick to it. And so every piece will have just as much seasoning as you actually sprinkle on it. So they'll be perfect the way you want them. Flavorful and amazing. All we really need is some garlic, a little pepper. You can use so many different other seasonings after that. You can use Italian seasoning, you can use so many different things. Thyme, uh, some of our bread dipping seasonings, but what I'm gonna use, all right, I've got the olive oil. I'm gonna sprinkle some actual garlic salt. That way I really won't have to salt them because this is gonna make them salty enough and I'm not gonna kill them, I'm just kind of, you know, lightly dusting them. But I'm making sure to cover every bit of it. I'm gonna throw some black pepper. And then after that, I'm actually going to take some fresh garlic and take my little grater here, like Rachel Ray uses, and just kind of shred some over, over the top of some of the pieces here. It's time for another beer already. All right, what I decided to do with the shrimp while we're waiting on the asparagus is to finish prepping that, and I actually am going to grill half of them and put the other half in a pan with some butter and garlic because uh, I just want the best of both worlds, and that's just how it is, so. I'm gonna start with some garlic salt and I'm actually just gonna sprinkle that on my shrimp. Let me show you that. I'm take that and I'm just gonna sprinkle that on my shrimp. You don't wanna kill it once, you know, once again. You just do a light little dusting. I'm gonna take some Old Bay. Old Bay seasoning is the best 
for shrimp. It gives you, I mean, literally just a, an amazing shrimp taste. It's so good. I put this on a lot of different fish too, but not necessarily on like tuna or salmon. This is something you would put on tilapia or uh, any other type of fish just about. Uh, even swordfish maybe, but swordfish I like to do like a steak. So I'll put steak seasoning on, on, a, on swordfish and even sometimes on tuna, but anyway. So I wanna douse these pretty good with the Old Bay. Cause these puppies are gonna grill. I'm probably gonna grab a lemon, squirt a little lemon juice on there and bam, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna start by putting, I actually had some softened butter on the counter. I'm just gonna use that, but you know, basically you can do it however, frozen, refrigerated, butter, whatever you wanna do. And it will go very slowly. You're gonna to wanna to put that on a very low heat because I want it to melt and turn into, I don't want it to, to burn the butter. You don't wanna burn the garlic. So I'm gonna let this slowly turn into a little sauce here. And then I'm gonna throw in my garlic as well. All right, so now we let that melt very slowly and then we'll put in our shrimp and, it's, and we'll season those also with some Old Bay and we'll be great. We're bringing the tuna out here first because it's bigger and it's gonna take a little while even though we're doing a uh, very light cooking on this to keep it rare or medium rare at least at the, at the most. Then I'll bring the shrimp out because they're so much smaller, they won't take no time at all. So I'm gonna close this up. I'm probably not gonna do but just a few minutes on each side. We're talking maybe five minutes at most each side and see where we're at. Look at these grill marks. It looks like a freaking steak. Oh, it's amazing. We're gonna be done real soon here and I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the shrimp on. All right, while that's going, I'm gonna throw on these few little shrimp because we got the other shrimp still cooking in this pan with the butter and the garlic. We got these cute little guys going on here. They want to. Alright, so we just pulled our shrimp off of the grill. They're ready. We also pulled our tuna off. It is amazing. I'll show you the inside of that here in a minute. We have our asparagus that came out in just 20 minutes. It was all ready to go and our shrimp that's in the pan with the butter and the garlic. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be amazing. All right, so let me show you the inside of this. It's just like a ribeye steak. It's just basically medium rare here. We would actually eat this even rarer than this, but the grill was a little bit hotter than I anticipated, so. But I just wanted you to see, that that's how you eat freaking tuna. Is this or less? And usually we do less. We're going to enjoy our tuna, shrimp, and asparagus on our plates. Yum, yum. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time on Food Shorts. See you never.